Hi Divine Redeemer families, Mrs. Han here. I wanted to let you know that this summer's VBS is going to be virtual. What does that mean? Well, it means we're going to have the same types of activities as usual, it's just that you'll be doing them in your backyard and in your home. I'll be creating packets for you to pick up at Divine Redeemer to help you through this process. So stay tuned and keep waiting and watching for exciting information on this summer's virtual VBS at Divine Redeemer. Today is our last day of Kids Connection and we're going to discover that Jesus' power takes action. By that I mean action on our part. To get started, let's talk about God sightings. How did you see God working in your life this week? I'm gonna pause now and you can talk about how did you see God working in your life this week? Thanks for sharing. I love watching for God, and I also love exploring God's amazing world with you. Today's Bible story comes from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. You can read it now if you want. So you can pause and get your Bible if you would like. I'll wait. I'll still be here. The story starts in Jerusalem, near a place called the Pool of Bethesda. This pool had hundreds of sick people lying nearby waiting for healing. We're going to act out the story, so we're going to have you lie down. Go ahead, lie down on the floor or on the ground outside if you want. I'll wait. Is everyone comfy? Good. Because you have to just lie there like that while I tell you what happened, just like they did by the pool of Bethesda. Well, the people lying by the pool weren't so comfy because they were all sick. The Bible says some were blind, some couldn't walk, some were paralyzed. Why, they were why were they lying by this particular pool? Well, they believed that every so often an angel of the Lord would come and stir up the water. And the first one to get into the pool after the water swirled would be healed. So they laid and waited and waited and waited. Are you feeling frustrated just lying there waiting? One day, Jesus was walking by the pool and saw a man lying there. Jesus knew this man had been sick for 38 years. He couldn't walk. Jesus asked the man, would you like to get well? The man answered, I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets in ahead of me. Hmm, the man said, I can't. I seem to hear myself say I can't a little more than usual lately. With this coronavirus situation, I can't go to work, can't go to many places I want to, or meet with many people that I want to. What are some things you can't do during this coronavirus situation? Pause and talk about that. Thanks for sharing. That's right, we all seem to be limited by what we can't do right now. But let's get back to the Bible story. Here's the man lying near the pool with no one to help him get into the water. You try it. Without moving, can you get into the water? All your troubles would be over. Can you do it? Of course not. You can't move. Think how frustrating that would feel for this man who just wanted to get into the pool. Well, then along came Jesus, asking the man if he wants to be healed. And instead of saying yes, the man said, I can't. Thankfully, Jesus didn't leave it at that. He said, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. Quick, jump up, just like he did. The man rolled up his sleeping mat and began to walk. Did you see how that happened? Jesus healed him but he had to take action too. So now you can walk. Go ahead, walk around. I'm going to pause while you walk around the room and talk about the things you can do right now during this difficult time. I bet you came up with some great ideas. Way to go. Sometimes it's easy to make excuses about what Jesus wants us to do. You might think you're too shy or you're too young, but Jesus calls us to take action. And with his power and his help, there are plenty of ways we can take action right now. Just like we're learning today that Jesus' power takes action. Let's talk about that for a minute. 
What might Jesus be calling your family to do for other people right now? How can you take action instead of just saying, oh, I can't? What can you do? How can you take action? Think about how your family can do things for others right now. What can you do? Okay, now grab some paper, a pen or pencil, and have someone take notes while you make a plan. Maybe you could make an encouraging sign to hang over your front window or on your door. Or you could use some chalk to make some sidewalk art for people to enjoy. Or you could write jokes on the road so that as people go out walking, they see the positive jokes that you have written. Or you could leave notes for neighbors. Or you could call a nursing home. I'm sure you guys have even better ideas than I do. I'm going to pause the video now while your family stops and makes a plan. Thanks for those creative ideas. Way to go! Jesus' power takes action, and it can be action through you. Now you've come up with a plan to take action and change those I can'ts to I can's. Let's see another way that we can turn I can't into I can. First, we're going to try balancing on one foot. Now, try doing it while looking all around the room. Balance on one foot, but look all around the room. Turn your head around, look up, look down to the side. Okay, now try hopping on one foot while looking all around the room. See how long you can balance on one foot. Do it while looking around the room. Which way is easier? You can stop now. Sometimes it's hard. It made me feel like I can't balance very well, but I'm going to tell you a little science trick that might help you do it better. Pick something eye level to focus on as you're balancing on one foot. You got it? Now stand on one foot, hold one earlobe between your finger and thumb. Keep looking at that object and see how long you can do it now. By focusing on one thing, it should be easier to balance. This reminds me of how focusing on Jesus can help us stand strong. And our ears help provide balance. So holding your ear is a neat trick that can help you balance and it reminds us to listen for what Jesus is asking us to do. We just turned our I can'ts into I can's. Now let's celebrate with a song about serving God enthusiastically. Take a look at the link and you'll have to open the song in a new browser in a place called Vimeo. It's a Vimeo video. So take a look at the link and find that video. Stand up sing along and dance. See you in a minute. What a fun song. Thanks for singing and maybe for dancing too. Before we close today, let's play a quick game to help us remember that Jesus's power takes action. Get ready because this is an action-packed game. You're going to need more than one person to play this. Remember how in our Bible study the first person in the pool would be healed? In this game, I will call out an object, and you'll try to be the first one in your family to touch that object. Remember, be a good sport. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. The first object is a pillow. Okay, get ready. Now find something electronic. Are you ready? Be the first one to touch a wall. That one wasn't so hard. Okay, this might take a little while to find. So you might have to rewind after you do it. Are you ready? Set the bathroom door. I hope you found the bathroom door. Okay, this one's probably easier. Ready? A light switch. Get ready. A window. 
This one might take longer. Be nice to each other. Are you ready? A spoon. Okay, and the last one, you ready? Water from a faucet. How did you do? Was it fun? In our game, the goal was to be the first to touch an object. The last object was water, and that reminds me of our Bible story. The sick man wanted to be the first in the pool, but he said he couldn't. I'm going to pause the, the video now while you talk about this question. This week, how can you encourage each other to have an I can attitude instead of I can't? Pause now and talk about I can. Jesus' power takes action. We can always turn to Jesus to help when we're feeling an I can't attitude. His power will help us take action and encourage each other to stay positive and do good things for him. And those things can start right here in our own family. Let's close by thinking of ways your family members have taken action for each other. Maybe you've helped mom with dinner or your brother helped with your math homework. Go around your family and each person say at least one way a family member has recently taken action. I'm going to pause the video now while you thank each other and God for those actions. I'm so glad that Jesus' power takes action and that Jesus is always there to help us. Let's pray. Fold your hands and bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us and helping us to take action for you. Please be with our family during this difficult time, and please be with every person suffering with this virus right now. Thank you for never leaving us. We love you. In your name, amen. Now we're going to add a picture to your thankful journal, or you could just write. This week, I want you to draw a picture of something you're thankful for that you can do right now. Put today's date on your picture so you can look back at your journal later. You can draw that when this video is over. Thank for, thanks for joining us. Remember to watch for God's sightings. I really look forward to seeing you at our virtual VBS. Stay tuned. Watch our website. Check your emails. And you maybe are on Facebook. You can check there too because we're going to explain how virtual VBS is going to work and how you can stop by church and pick up some information, um, a bag that will help you through that exciting week of God's love in your yard and house. Take care, everyone. See you next time.